Hey guys, Riley here. It's time to lock the doors, hide the kiddos, and blow out the candles in those jack-o'-lanterns because we're gonna get a little freaky here today on Collider Video. The Halloween season has officially begun and the movie that put fear into the hearts of babysitters everywhere is getting a new sequel 40 years after the fact. Halloween the movie, the new movie that is, opens October 19th and it's billed as a direct sequel to the 1978 classic of the same name, which is not confusing at all, right? Two of the same name. Anyways, filmmakers David Gordon Green and Danny McBride had a vision for something new, a better sequel, a film that's a bit closer to the tone and style of the original cult favorite. And when they brought their idea to John Carpenter, well, he agreed. But that doesn't mean we throw out the old movies and forget they ever happened. The Shape, a.k.a. Michael Myers, didn't become a staple of Halloween just on the original movie alone. And with so many movies ready for a repeat viewing and celebration of Halloween, it's time we look at the top 10 kills from the entire franchise. By the way, everyone, spoilers for the entire series, if, well, if that needs to be said. Also, viewer discretion is advised because, well, this is a top 10 kills video for Halloween, so it might get a little dicey. So fair warning. So let's cue that music. Uh, not that music, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Though you're a decent movie, you get the honorable mention for almost single-handedly killing the franchise. Well done. Now, cue the music. The music we love. At number 10 is Halloween Part 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. John Strode is the unlucky dude that gets a knife in the gut, lifted in the air by said knife, and slammed into an electrical fuse box where the electrocution causes his head to explode. Damn, that was a good kill. If the Curse of Thorn storyline where these druids are trying to reproduce Michael Myers' DNA turned you off, well then this horrific kill at least gives you something to cringe on. Coming in at number 9 is Halloween 5, Revenge of Michael Myers. It's a two for one, and it comes when two lovers sneak into a barn for a roll in the hay. <laughs> Literally. Not a smart move when the shape is around, and ooh, a pitchfork mid-coitus sure ruins the mood, wouldn't you say? And extra credit points for that creative use of the scythe there, Mikey. That's brutal, but effective. And at number eight is a little bit of a cheat scene as you don't actually see the kill in question, but however, I think it's important to give props to some A-list talent that got their start in the Halloween movie. No, no, no. Paul Rudd lives in The Curse of Michael Myers. I'm talking about J. G. L. Joseph Gordon-Levitt in H2O, Halloween 20 years later. He gets an ice skate to the face. It's his character of Jimmy, he was a bit of a troublemaker, but he did help his neighbor, Marion, the nurse from the original Halloween, after someone broke into her house. After he investigated, well, you can see what the shape had in store for him. You're a good man, Jimmy. We hardly knew ye. At number seven, it's just all sorts of wrong, and it comes courtesy of Halloween Part 2, the 1981 version, mind you, and not the Rob Zombie version, but hold tight to that one. Halloween 2 had the ingenious idea to set the movie in a hospital the same night as the original, giving Michael all sorts of toys to use on his victims. When we see the aftermath of one of Michael's first kill, Dr. Mixter, who was killed with a syringe through the eye, the nurse, Janet Marshall, finds his body and Michael surprises her from behind with another syringe to the temple. Ugh, that's gonna leave a mark. Coming in at number six is an all-timer for me and is classified as the most tragic of the series, but again, for me. Why? Because it doesn't involve Michael at all. That's right, I'm talking about the boy mistaken for Michael in Halloween 2. Ben Tramer was just minding his own business on Halloween night when Dr. Loomis mistakes him for Michael and confusion follows. A police cruiser slams into the boy, exploding and burning him to death. It's a tragedy, one that could absolutely happen in a night filled with confusion over an escaped killer. That's why this gets the number six spot. Cracking the top five and landing in the number five spot comes from one of Rob Zombie's movies. I'm actually glad we can include it here. Nurse Daniels, played by the legendary Octavia Spencer, yep, the same Octavia Spencer, is brutally murdered by Michael, and the kill is all sorts of savage. It's truly one of the most realistic kills from the entire series, and a kill that I actually had to look away from. Oh, God. Coming in at number four is one of my all-time favorite kills from the franchise because of its brutality and what the fuckedness. That's not a word, but I'm gonna go with it. In Halloween Part 4, The Return of Michael Myers, the franchise finally resurrects the shape, and good old Mikey is back to his killing ways when it's revealed that after the events of Part 2, Michael has been in a coma for many years and only awakens when it's revealed that Laurie Strode had a daughter. So Michael's up and about and heads to Haddonfield, where terror ensues, and a group of survivors hide in the house with a cop taking watch. Well, we know what happens here. Mikey finds a way into the house, kills the cop, and lays in wait for our hapless victim, Kelly, to arrive with some coffee. And with a shotgun in hand, 
boom. Yeah, that's right. Michael is like Batman. He doesn't use guns. Well, he uses a gun to impale somebody through a door, so that's something. This is one of those creative kills horror is known for, and it's a worthy addition to the list. Yeesh. Coming in at number three, it's a classic and a staple from the original Halloween movie. Post-coitus, Bob, sporting those wicked cool glasses, hits the kitchen to find some beer when he notices the door is open off the patio. He investigates and, well, you guessed it, the breathing from the shape takes our attention and we can only watch helplessly as Bob searches the kitchen for Linda, who he thinks is playing a prank on him. So tell me, kids, what does Bob win behind door number two? That's right, Alex, a knife through the chest impaled on the wall. This is the kill, one of the most iconic from the series, and shows the deaf camera work and direction from a master of horror in John Carpenter. Coming in at number two is a classic, and it's coming from the first sequel again, Halloween 2. Nurse Karen Bailey had been working a very long shift at the hospital, on Halloween night, no less, and just wanted to relax in a hydrotherapy tub with her co-worker with benefits, Bud. You're doomed, Bud, based on your name alone. After the shape dispatches Bud, he turns the temperature up to 11 in the tub. And after a disgusting case of mistaken identity, ugh, that's just effing wrong, Michael drowns poor Karen, scalding her so bad her face falls off. It's horrible, Michael. You need some Neosporin for that hand of yours. And finally, the number one kill, the best kill in the Halloween franchise comes, shocker, from the original 1978 classic Halloween. It's the one that started it all, and it's Annie's death. Her death is remembered for being a study in nightmares. Escaped mental patient tracks the girl from outside the house, watching her every move. There's barely any music, just ambient sound as she walks the house looking for her keys so she can drive to see her boyfriend. The audience notices the car door is locked. They hold their breath when she walks the house alone and collectively gasp when she returns and the car door is unlocked now. Don't go in there, Annie. He's in the car. The breathing crescendos and the shape attacks, strangling her and slitting her throat. There's no blood. There's no major bells and whistles. An innocent life is taken and it's set up and filmed in such a real way that you can't help but be scared shitless. Annie's death is the most powerful and deserves the number one spot on this list. So that's it. That's all the best kills in the Halloween franchise. But what did I miss? What kill should have been added? Will the new Halloween add to this list or perhaps a few crack the top five? You'll have to find out on October 19th when Halloween lands in theaters. So drop in those comments, add to our list of favorite kills, and remember to like and share this video with your friends. Your life may just depend on it.